Hi, this is an install rear looking camera in this 2017 Dodge Ram 2500 van. And they're in this box right here. Look at these. Looks like they're um, made in China. It comes in this really good, cool looking box. Then we have the manual. Manual. These are the install instructions. That's it. Can't find anything online. This is the seven inch monitor. Comes with one cable, the DIN connector. Looks like a six wire. The center guide. Has a remote. And it has three more boxes. This has got the cable in it. Here's the cable. It has four connectors on it. That end. So this is the female end. And the other end is the male. So it has a male and a female. Here's the camera. Oh. Okay, here are the bag of screws that came with the camera. They just fell out. Those are the only mounting screws. And then this is the camera. Uh, let's see. This is not a motorized camera. It doesn't change position. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to take this plastic off and on, on, leave it on. I don't know, maybe it's part of the ceiling. It looks pretty random though, if you look at the edges. Cable looks like this. This one says it's 15 meters long. That's got 50 feet. This cable does not hook up to here. This is six pins. This is four pins. So I'm gonna open up this box right here and look inside of it. Okay, so I found a bracket here for mounting the display, a remote for the display, and I found this cabling harness. Typically short camera cable going to this 50 foot long spool which goes into this cabling harness right here now out of this harness we've got a I don't know seven or eight foot cable that goes to the camera probably this one's ground this one is 12 volts and this one's going to be to the reverse switch this section of the cable is going to be in the dashboard and then just this long link right here is going to go to the back of the van where the camera is going to be. So it means when I buy a second camera that would hook up right here, um, I need to buy an additional cable and camera that is of this variety, which is a um, four pin. The back of the ProMaster, and this is where I want to mount the camera, it's up here. And I'm going to jump up here and look at this. Uh, looks like it has a couple of screws. One's right here, one's right here. This is all just water. So I'm going to take these off first. If I look around the back right here, there's a light. If I look inside at the cable harness, I can see there's some holes through it. So. This is where I'll string the cable and it'll run around, probably around the roof right here, all the way up to the front. Now I'm taking the current protruding black device off the back of the van. There's two screws that I need to remove, Phillips says. Here you can see the cable to the current backup camera going through, going through the van's metal shell, and it has some flaps. That's where I'm going to stick my rear view camera. Looks like the hole's big enough to stick the cable through without cutting the connector off the end and then soldering it back together again. Here you see the backup camera and then a running light. That hole's a 3 8 inch hole, so I went down to Ace and bought a 1 inch bolt, 3 8 diameter, two fender washers, and two gaskets. I'm not going to use these slides. 
on either side unless I have to. I'm going to try to tighten that bolt down. The cable going into the van has a grommet. The inside diameter right here is three quarters of an inch. So I used a three quarter inch drill bit, a three eighths of an inch drill bit, and a big Phillips head. The camera's on top so it doesn't interfere with the back doors opening, and you can see the gasket and the grommet. The camera's mounted off to one side so when drilling the holes I wouldn't hurt anything, and it's the side of the van that's the most problematic for me driving. I've got my cable going around this side and it comes out right here. This is the front of the van and as we look up we can see the high top comes down at an angle and this this tray is I think on top of a piece of metal. So now I don't even, don't even have a key in the, but I can turn these lights on so there's power coming up here so that's ideally where I would run my video cable. So this is where I'd like to run the cable. I like to run it up here. Now it looks like this this piece and yeah, it separates. Let's look underneath the visor right here. Yeah, there's some screws right here and here. Looks like there's another screw here. Yeah, what if that tab comes off? Oh, looks like it comes off. Okay, another screw. This is where I think the cables are coming from, and then they're coming down through this to the lights. Torque wrenches. I'm going to pull the screw out. So I pulled out another T30 from the visor right there, that hole. So now it looks like I got another couple T30s here in this visor. And then I've got one right here in the middle. And then I've got another two, uh, no, just one right here at this end of the visor, and another one up in that hole. And then I've got the other side of the, the van to do. This visor screw is much shorter, and it's much more difficult to get out. It's got some kind of grease on it. I don't know, it's this, this end of the visor, not this other end. I'm out of the second hole so it doesn't put any of the grease on my fingers uh, and it was easier to get out uh, but it was binding because the the whole visor comes out now so this is what the hole looks like after we're done and now I'm gonna take out if I get back up here you can see I'm take out that middle screw right there okay this is the third screw it's a longer one uh, so I'm gonna put it in this cubby hole here with the longer ones. Towards the other end of the visor and it has a screw that goes in here. It's the shorter type of screw. It looks like it is clipped in. You can see the clip right there. So I'm not going to pull it all the way out. Um, I'm just going to let it sit there. Well, I'm not going to take it out because it's part of the center console and I want to leave the other hole on this side in and take this visor off so that it's just mounted here at the center and look at the wiring to these lights here. You can see LH, that means left hand side. So this is the driver's side, left hand side. This clip came out loosely and you can see that none of the tabs are broken. There's no uh, stress fractures. Um, it just came out. Um, it's 13 pieces, it's about 20 bucks on Amazon. So I'm going to try to figure out which of these tools to use to remove that clip. This is the tool I use. I use that end of it. And here's the piece. And you can see the R right there at the top for right hand. Okay, this came out much easier. If you look at this clip, it's um, anchored on this side. So it goes up and hooks in. It goes up and hooks in like that. And then twists up. So now I'm down to that screw and this one, but the recess so deep, this this tool I'm using um, is too shallow, so I need an extender right here in this, this direction. I've taken out all the screws here on the driver's side, and all the screws over here on the passenger side. 
I'm zooming in on this center console right here. The screws seem to go through everything to the sheet metal body of the car or into these sleeves that are tapped. The center console has this gap right here and I can't feel underneath it but my hunch is that there's some screws that go up and that this whole thing this whole thing is like a wing and this is one side of the wing that goes up and down this is another side of the wing that goes up and down and this center right here actually is protruding down and that this this lip right here I can pull off and it'll reveal some screws Okay, so I've cut the bolts loose and I dropped this down a bit. And you can see that there's basically nothing under here. And there's one console center right there. So I found this tool and slipped it in there and pried it apart. So this bezel I'm taking off fits in there really well. So using these two tools, I use this this um, this one to get in there in the first place and then I use this one to poke at these these um, clips there's two clips there's one right here and then there's one right here and then it just fell out and it revealed this one screw that I probably would have ripped out if I hadn't gone slow there's ample room in here to fit this this cable harness tuck it up to this side in there or in there so I'm quite happy all I've got to do is figure out how to get that camera cable back into this enclosure so how do I do that where do I go through this roof disconnected the tray um, the screw that goes right here is a little bit shorter than the rest you can see it's right there on the right, and then you have the mid-range and then the longer ones. And you can see the washers that I bought. Yeah, the fender washers. The cables are keyed. There's no way to put them in wrong. Okay, so I've gone from here to this hole. And then through everything, up through this tray right here, up through this hole in the tray. Over his right shoulder, it was temporarily going through there. It's going to straighten out. And now it's coming down through, through here. And I'm just going to pull on this, this cable right here and pull it all the way through. And there it is. Wahoo! Okay, so what I want to do is I want to monitor cable and run it through this hole and then mount the monitor right here where the mirror is. Battery through the floor at the driver's feet. So you have that, you twist this by hand, and then you have these you use a quarter width. And there's um, two more over there underneath the center console. Um, you lift up this side first and then you pull it in this direction. This is the floor mat. The left side is where most of the action is to get it off. The right side's underneath the center console. There's a screw right here and then the rest of these, they all are these, these quarter spin things. And you gotta get them in the right spot to get them out. Then there are these two tabs that seem to get stuck. This battery looks sort of long. Okay, so you can see the ground strap right here. So that should be easy to connect to. The positive terminal looks a little bit more difficult. The question is, how do we connect to it? So I place my two fingers here, and I pull in this direction, and then I lift up. And that reveals it. So this this piece goes right there on that tab. And putting it back, I've basically just practiced looking at that and then pressing it down again. 
I'm testing this voltage probe. Okay, and I get a light on in the handle. The light's going on. So this is without any key in the dashboard. It's flicking on and off because I'm not getting a good connection. It's red and it's got a green stripe on it. That's where I need to hook up the power. And that's black is where I need to hook up the ground. My goal is to operate this camera independent of these controls on the light console above the rear view mirror. Looking at the back of this, here you can see the light bulbs. Here you can see the connection where we found power and ground. This appears to be a test connection. This cable goes to the microphone, so the microphone's right here, and this goes back into the hands-free electronics. The black piece separates from the white with these two clips. Turning it over. You can see the microphone right here. I think this is the ground going up in this loop and around the top right here. I think this is the power line. You can see the two bulbs and how to replace them. They're labeled W5W. I started to take apart this centerpiece. It starts to feel like a computer mouse. ABS plastic points pushing on ABS plastic pads that all get smashed and then it starts to get smushy and it doesn't respond so don't bang on it. What I want to do now is take this mirror off so I'm going to grab it right here and twist it this way. Okay it didn't take much. The mirror came right off. Now the question is how do I mount the LCD display? It comes with this mount. It's sort of like a camera mount. It comes with a piece of foam uh, double-sided paste on either side and I think most people just clamp it to the top of a dashboard like this. The monitor has this hole right here that I could use. It has the the buttons on the front. I don't know yet if I can fully control, you know, flip it upside down with the setup inside the monitor. So I want to try to keep it like this. The cable going down also and the power button. I don't want them up there near the near the, the visor, you know, up, up here. So I'd rather it be like this. I'm thinking about using the original mirror and this bracket and just gluing the LCD panel to this mirror itself. I'd better get the electronics working first. So I'd better do a test run while everything's hanging from the ceiling. I'm looking at the instrument panel. I think behind this is where all the fuses are. It has these uh, clips to prevent you from screwing all the way out. And this is the fuse panel right here. This is the size of my finger. Those numbers are amps. So what I have to do is turn this light on, leave it on, and then pull fuses until it turns off. I do not have the keys in the ignition. I'm just pulling them out and then pushing them back in to see if I can get the light to flicker. And I'm going to put a wire nut on it. The ground. It plugged back into the overhead dome lights, and this is the apparatus. This yellow connector is where I'll hook up the other camera, the LCD panel, so we'll see if it turns on. Not much color difference. I've hooked up the other camera, and you can see that there's not much color difference there either. I just finished mounting the bezel on the mirror. You can see it goes wraps around inside. Actually, it's upside down. And then I just stick the, the LCD panel in there. So I've got to run the other camera cable that hooks up to this, this yellow one that goes out the side, so I'll have two cameras. And then I'll just press this button, or I'm sure there's a remote button that will switch between the two.